Well, my friends, if you follow sports, then you know there are basically two kinds of players. And I'm not talking about good players and not so good players. I'm referring to the quiet ones and the talkers. You know, some players go about their business on the court, in the field, or on the ice without hardly saying a word. They don't yell at referees. They don't yell at the umpires. They don't brag before, during, or after the game. They play hard, and they let their actions speak for themselves. But some players, they seem to never, ever stop talking. Before a game, they babble on about how they're going to beat the other team or make sure that their listeners know how great that they are. During games, they scream at officials and even at players on their very own teams. They try to get in the ear of the opponent, trash-talking, as it's often called. There are some players good enough to perform at a level equal to the predictions that they make. And when that happens, then opponents are more likely to accept all their boasting and trash talk. It's the performance that wins the respect of the competition. But if someone continually runs his or her mouth and doesn't perform well, well, it's a whole different story, especially when they give a 100 excuses as to why that happened. In that case, the person looks foolish, and opponents have a hard time respecting that person. When a person acts in that way, we often think or say, well, he or she sure talks a good game, sure talks a good game. Of course, what's meant by such a statement is that the words and the actions of that person just don't match. That what is said by that person doesn't translate into their performance. In a very real sense, their words are empty. Children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and in truth. So says St. John in the opening line of our second reading today. Remember that in the earliest days of Christianity, all they had, all they had was a great story to tell. And not just any story, of course, but the greatest story ever told. And as incredible as that story was, words themselves would not be enough. What people would respond to would be the difference that belief made in the lives of those first followers. It wouldn't be enough to simply say things that inspired people, a message people needed to hear. No, 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 my friends. For the gospel message to be embraced by all who heard it proclaimed, they would also need to see it lived out, to see a change in the way those early Christians lived, see the impact of their beliefs finished out in concrete ways. St. John seems to have known that talking a good game would not be enough. Believers would have to back up their claims with day-to-day -day choices that reveal to others that their words were not simply that, were not simply words. Don't we often fall into that trap, my friends? Don't we sometimes simply talk a good game? Now it's painful to consider that question honestly because I know that I have done that. Now I pray for people to not go hungry. But do I do anything to actually feed someone? Now I stand up before this community and talk about the necessity of letting go of grudges and being forgiving people, but I know that I'm not quite as kind to some people who have hurt me. I say that all people are precious to God, and yet often I, I prejudge people 
come to conclusions about them before I even get to know them. I talk about the importance of giving from our wants and not from our excess. And yet in reality, I don't deny myself much. And I've gone on and on about how everything we do must be done out of love. And I know that my motives toward almost everything are mixed. Yes, I talk a good game, but... The gospel passage we heard is very familiar to us. Jesus is the vine, and we're the branches. In essence, there's an intimate connection between us, a bond that sustains us, a closeness that is life-giving. This metaphor is summed up by Jesus in his beautiful words, remain in me and I remain in you. And that really gets at the heart of the matter, my friends. You know, our faith teaches us some pretty incredible things. That God the Son became one of us. That God the Son died for us. And that God the Son rose from the dead and is alive. There's one more thing that is just as incredible. Our God does not just live out there somewhere. He lives in you, and you, and you, and in me. And that makes all the difference in the world. Or at least it should. My friends, let's be sure that our faith is not just words or beliefs rattling around in our heads. Rather, let's make sure that our faith is a living faith, a faith that really shapes the choices and the decisions that we make, a faith that allows the God in each of us to be poured into the world to every loving thing that we say and do. Let no one ever be able to say that we just talk a good game.